From the Detroit Free Press, I'm Robin Chan with today's Voice Briefing. It's Thursday, November 21st, 2024. From the Detroit Free Press, I'm Dana Afana. The city sent out notices to homes with lead service lines or unknown material that may be lead, as required by the EPA. This alarmed several residents. As of November, the EPA requires every municipality with lead service lines to mail the notification letters. But on Tuesday, Director Gary Brown of the city's Water and Sewerage Department told Detroiters not to fret. Brown assured multiple times that the city's drinking water is safe and below the actionable level of lead. Detroit has about 80,000 lead service lines out of 300,000 service lines. Those notices were intended to alert customers of those lines, which the city is currently working on replacing using various grants. Brown said water is tested before it leaves treatment plants operated by the Great Lakes Water Authority and that there is no lead in the water distribution system. But the Water Authority adds a protective additive to the water for protection for those who have lead in their homes. I'm Frank Witzel with the Detroit Free Press. St. Joseph's Shrine, an Eastern Market Church built in 1855, made a modest expansion announcement Tuesday, but for Detroiters, it represents something so much bigger. The city's revival is so promising that even the Catholic Church is getting involved. St. Joseph, which had fallen on hard times that it nearly closed, is now thriving again and purchasing an adjacent five-acre property for $2.75 million, less than the initial $3.5 million asking price to create what it calls a transformative community space. But more than that, the $10 million to $20 million project represents how groups are investing in Detroit, which a decade ago was so bad off financially, it became the largest municipality in America to ever file for bankruptcy protection. Officials and residents still offer mixed views on how well the city represents renewal. But if the experience of the landmark church on J Street is any indication, Detroit is living up to its two Latin mottos. We hope for better things and it will rise from the ashes. The church's project of the sales park includes the construction of a new, larger hall for gatherings, a playground for children, a garden, and a co-ed Catholic middle school, which eventually could lead to a new high school. In just eight years, Reverend J.B. Cummings said the church went from just 50 showing up for Sunday services to more than 600, and many of them are younger than 30 and looking for local schools to educate their children. We didn't expect to buy this property, but a very generous family came forward and offered to pay for it, Cummings. The church pastor said, noting that there is no master plan yet, but ideally, if it were operational in five years, that would be amazing. Hi, I'm Bill Leitner at the Free Press in Detroit with a good news story about Birmingham's apartment tower, Baldwin House Senior Living. Well, that was the name until early this year. Owners renamed it the Baldwin on Chester. At the same time, they ended amenities that seniors loved. It looked like the owners were switching to conventional apartments at market rents away from offering senior services with some units at affordable housing rents. Yet this week, everything went back the seniors' way. City officials approved new operating rules for Baldwin House. Turns out the owners needed the city's blessing before they'd qualify for easy financing with federal aid. So the Baldwin House residents will get back many senior services, and the building will offer even more units at low rents for low-income tenants. To learn about the amazing history of Baldwin House and the role of former Mayor Dorothy Conrad, see my story at Freep.com. Find more from the Detroit Free Press on Freep.com. That's F-R-E-E-P.com. Thanks for listening, and you'll hear more from us tomorrow.